Hey there, and welcome back to another video. So I know right now it is the dead of winter and we're a long ways off from spring flowers, but I wanted to share in a bit more detail about how we're growing our tulips this year. If you guys remember in our last Dahlia video, I shared that we had to change our Dahlia storage this year because we were using our usual Dahlia storage space to store our tulip balls, which we've been growing in crates this year. If you haven't checked out that Dahlia video yet, I'll actually link it in the description box below. But today I thought I'd share more about why we're exploring this new strategy for growing tulips and give you a closer look as to how we're actually doing it. So if you're ready, let's go. So believe it or not, this idea of growing tulips in crates it all started after I ordered amaryllis bulbs for our first holiday market that happened back in December of 2021. Now I know the two topics, they don't exactly go together, so let me explain. Back in 2021, I had an increasing interest in amaryllis flowers. I was particularly drawn to how beautiful of display they put on in my home during the winter months. And then later on, I learned more about sort of the symbolism behind them and my love for amaryllis just grew even more. And I'll share more about that in an amaryllis video that we have coming up here on our channel. Anyways, having amaryllis in my home was really my first experience forcing flowers. Now, forcing flowers is nothing more than making a plant flower in an artificially created environment. You know, we often associate amaryllis with winter. After all, it's common in the US to bloom amaryllis bulbs at or around Christmas time. Amaryllis, however, are very much a warm season flower, and in nature, they tend to bloom in the spring or the summer. But by bringing amaryllis bulbs indoors during the coldest parts of the year, our homes are able to replicate the warmth of mother nature, and that's how we get amaryllis blooms during the dull days of winter. Now, this whole long story is simply to share that the process of blooming amaryllis is really what sparked my curiosity of being able to force other bulbs in much the same manner. So after our holiday market in 2021, and for the rest of early winter in 2022, I really dug deep into the research of how to force tulip bulbs. And now this year in 2023 is the first time that we're really trying this entire process out. So I think most of us are familiar with the process of growing tulips outside, either in a field or in your landscape. You know, in the fall, before the ground has had a chance to freeze, you dig a hole, you plop some bulbs in the ground, cover them back up in, with dirt, and then Mother Nature takes care of the rest by providing your tulips with the cold treatment they need to then bloom the following spring. And we have gone this route and it has worked great for us. But what we're hoping to achieve by forcing our tulip bulbs in crates this year, for one, we're hoping to have tulips available sooner in the year. You see, by manipulating the temperature of our grow spaces and producing that sort of artificial environment for our tulips, we can somewhat control when our tulips bloom. And our goal this year is to have blooms in time for Valentine's Day, which is obviously a major flower holiday. Now, the other thing that we're hoping to achieve is a longer, more consistent season of tulips. For most field-grown tulips, you plant them all at the same time, and most of them bloom at or around the same time as well. For a lot of flower farmers, tulip season it happens in one big flush. And when you do that, you have to have somewhere ready for your tulips to go. You have to have a lot of customers ready and willing to buy. And that can put a lot of pressure on your spring season. But because we're growing in crates and we're able to move those crates around to different grow spaces, we can essentially bloom our bulbs in continuous successions, meaning we can sell the same number of bulbs as perhaps a larger farm, but we can spread that out over a lot more weeks, making the labor involved with growing such a large crop much more manageable. And it puts less pressure on us to have, our, to, have to move our product, you know, all at once. So let me show you a little bit of what we've been up to these past few months. Knowing that we wanted to go this route with our tulips, we spent some time last year sourcing lots of bulb crates. Really, these are just so handy to grow in. I mean, they stack well. They're big enough where we can fit a lot of bulbs within a crate, 
and they're small enough that we can easily move these crates by hand even when they're filled with soil and bulbs. I actually sourced most of these crates from a local greenhouse. So if you're interested in starting your own collection of them, um, I recommend checking the greenhouses in your area. Just because tulips are finicky about disease, I did do a once over with a sanitizing spray just to ensure the health of our tulips. And I'll link that spray that I use in the description box below. I did end up just ordering it off of Amazon. And then we started filling each crate with a layer of soil. We didn't line our crates with any sort of craft paper or newsprint. I want our crates to be able to drain well, and I don't want to hinder the development of roots either. Here you'll see that I'm using some leftover mum mix that we had on hand to fill, to fill these crates. It's the same soil that we use when we grow our potted mums, um, but really any soil will do as long as it drains easily. After I lined each crate with soil, it was time to plant. Now I know some growers say they can fit close to 100 bulbs in a crate, but that wasn't our experience. We planted our bulbs egg carton style, meaning they were close but not quite touching. And we averaged about 65 bulbs per crate. All of our bulbs, they were premium 12 centimeter bulbs, so perhaps that's why other growers are able to fit more into a crate, but I'm simply sharing our experience. I was careful not to pot up bulbs that looked too heavily diseased, I know fusarium and penicillin can be prevalent in bulbs and it can be detrimental to a tulip crop. And so I focus on planting healthy bulbs that wouldn't spread disease throughout our entire grow space. Once a crate was full of bulbs, I simply topped the soil and then made sure to label each crate. And I repeated that process about a hundred times or so. After I finished planting all the bulbs, I gave everything a good drink of water and placed them into their cold holding spaces where I'm watching them develop roots and put on tip growth. I'm being careful this year to monitor temperature. I have a couple of different spaces set up right now. Each space is cooling our bulbs at a different temperature, and I'm seeing how that affects the rate of growth. Out in our garage, we're maintaining temperatures close to 40 degrees, while inside, I also have some tulips rooting at 50 degrees. In a forcing program such as this, temperature fluctuations can affect the rate of growth, so I'm being mindful of maintaining the most consistent temperature possible. To do this, I've been using a small greenhouse heater that I purchased from Amazon, combined with a thermostat that I also purchased from Amazon. And I'll link both of these products in the description box below um, for you to check out if you'd like. I will say I have been pleasantly surprised by how well this little system is working. I had my thermostat set at plus or minus three degrees from 50 degrees. So when the temperature dips below 47 degrees Fahrenheit, it signals this greenhouse heater to kick on and the heater will run until that 50 degree temperature is met. You could also attach the same thermostat to some sort of cooler, like a cool bot, if you wanted to keep this space from becoming too warm. The thermostat has a separate plug spaces for both cooling and heating devices, but for this time of year, that's really not necessary. So I'm only using the heating function on my thermostat. I'll be honest, I was worried about using a heater in my home, but this thing is quiet. It hardly runs. I thought for sure that this was going to spike my energy bill, but it hasn't. 
And most importantly, I do feel safe using this heater um, in this space right here. You know, my mind, it tends to wander to those horror stories that you hear about space heaters and whatnot. But this setup really gives me peace of mind and I love that. So other things that we are monitoring in these spaces is moisture. We want to be careful not to let these crates dry out as that could affect the stem length and our tulip crop. As I said, we did give everything a good drink when we moved the crates in here. And being that it's cold, they have been maintaining moisture pretty well. We find that we have to water every couple of weeks, which is pretty manageable for us. We just pull everything out, give it a good soak, and then put all our crates back into their cold holding space. So this is as far into the process as we have gotten right now. I do have one more space I will be moving these crates into as they become ready to put on top growth. That space is a bit warmer yet, closer to 65 degrees, and that's really going to mimic the spring experience that would force outdoor tulips into blooming. Or at least that's the plan. Will this process of forcing tulips actually work? I mean, I have no idea being that it's my first year giving this a try. I am encouraged by the progress that I'm seeing right now, and I will be sure to film an update video as we get further along in the season. If you want more updates before that though, I encourage you to follow um, along on social as I love sharing behind the scenes both on Instagram and Facebook stories. So be sure to follow Two Sisters Flower Farm there. To quickly answer a few questions that I know that you'll likely have, we sourced all of our bulbs from Netherland Bulb Company and Edney this year. We did buy an assortment of different varieties, everything from single tulips to fancy doubles, parrot varieties, and even some fringe tulips. I will say if you are a home gardener or a small scale gardener wanting to grow the same varieties that we grow, but not wanting to purchase wholesale quantities, you'll definitely want to keep an eye out come fall, which I know is a ways off yet, because we'll be hosting another bulb sale this year, and yes, it will include us shipping this time not just local pickup. So that's something we're looking forward to being able to share. We want to share these special varieties with all of you. I think that about covers it for this video. I am really excited to have these tulips growing right now. Tulips have always been one of my favorite flowers and so if we can extend the season so that we have fresh tulips blooming all winter long, well that would be really exciting. Let me just close out this video by saying thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the content in this video, we'd really appreciate it if you let us know by giving this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As always, I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until next time, bye guys.